Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Friday, January 5th, 2018. And the subject of today's video is the Cresta Powerhouse on the North Fork of the Feather River. And it's part of PG&E's Stairway of Power, uh, which I've been covering sections of that Stairway of Power uh, in this most recent series of videos that I've been doing. And I will reference the other videos in the description box below this video, as, as well as uh, give you something to click on at the end of this video to go to those. And first I wanna show you a PG&E graphic. If you've seen my previous videos, you've seen this before, but I just need to give a general overview again um, and show you where the Cresta Powerhouse sits in relation to the other components of this stairway of power. So if you can see where I'm pointing my mouse, the uh, right here, this Cresta Reach. Um, my last video, I had done this Belden uh, area with the Belden Powerhouse, and that's another licensed project. The actual project that's licensed to PG&E for the Cresta Powerhouse also includes the, the Rock Creek Powerhouse and, and all of the elements that surround that. That whole, uh, it's the project number uh, licensed by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is Project P-1962. And it's called the Rock Creek Cresta Project. So I'm not gonna go uh, deeply into the Rock Creek uh, part of this because I'm just taking one piece at a time. So today I'm covering the Cresta. And as you can see, the water comes from, well, where, where I did the last video at Belden, Belden discharges into that Rock Creek Reservoir. And then, um, it comes on down and there's a powerhouse at the end of that reservoir and that discharges into the Cresta Reservoir, which is right here. And then if you keep going, there's the um, Cresta Powerhouse is right here. And just to give uh, those who haven't seen my videos, uh, a, a quick review. The stairway of power is a system of dams and reservoirs, power plants, tunnels, and other features um, along the North Fork of the Feather River. And it's known as a hydroelectric power scheme. And there are various projects licensed to PG&E by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, um, but they do operate really as, as one in getting the water from basically up from up in the Sierra Nevada mountains to Lake Oroville. So all the way down here to Lake Oroville. And this Cresta development, they call it, this part of that project includes um, the Cresta Reservoir, which is right here, uh, the Cresta Dam, I'll be showing you that in a minute. There's an intake structure within that reservoir that uh, takes the water through a 21,000 foot tunnel that takes it to um, to the pinstocks for the Cresta Powerhouse. And I'll show you some photos of those pinstocks. They're 800 feet long, one of them, and the other one is 775 feet long. And I'll show you, this is a tunnel that you go through that's right, if I can turn this around, it's right by the Cresta Dam, the Cresta Power Dam. And this is a Google Street View. You can get a street view up in here because Highway 70 runs along the river all the way through the Feather River Canyon. And so this is uh, where the dam structure is. And then when you keep going, like here's, here's a, a satellite view of the dam. And 
as you saw um, in the previous photo, there's a highway runs right along beside it and then goes through a tunnel. And there's quite a few tunnels up in there. And, and when you're going through this area, you, um, you really can see why the miners would give up when they had different uh, ideas back in mining days to uh, block off some of the flow of the Feather River so they could get at the gold. But they found like it's just uh, there was too much rock. And uh, so they gave up on projects like that. And um, when you drive through the Feather River Canyon, you can see that there's a lot of, of uh, rock in through there. This is a 2D uh, satellite view showing the Cresta powerhouse right here with those uh, pinstocks coming down, the 800 foot and the 775 foot pinstock. And this is a photo that I took when I was up there in November. This is the, the pinstocks coming down off of the mountain. And then they go under the road. They go under Highway 70. And those pinstocks are 12, in, 12 feet in diameter. Here's a, a better shot of the pinstocks going under the highway. And they're, um, if you haven't seen pinstocks above ground, they're pretty impressive actually made out of steel and so they go under the road and then this is the powerhouse on the other side of the road and it's a it's a a concrete uh well what do they call it let me see forget what they call it it's a uh, it's concrete Oh, it's a reinforced concrete steel frame powerhouse. So you can see it's not extremely impressive. It's just sort of sits there at the side of the road. The pinstocks are much more eye catching than this part. And it has uh, two vertical Francis turbines in the powerhouse. And this is where the pin stocks uh, go in to the turbines. And the PG&E truck was there that day. There's a switching yard here, which actually, there's two switching yards, one for the, the Rock Creek powerhouse above here which is part of this project but I'll, I'll cover that in another another video but this is the um, switching yard for this one and they are connected the two uh, switching yards have lines that go oh I'm not sure how far it is but um, they hook together and then they go from uh, into a uh, substation in the Sacramento Valley in Rio Oso. Oh, it's seven. It's almost eight miles long, the line that connects the Rock Creek and the Cresta switchyards. And again, here's another shot. I wanted to show you this one because if you look to the right, right here, there's a clearing. And if you are ever up there and you want to get a really good look at all of this uh, it's pretty easy because you can drive into that clearing and get some really good views and photos and so you're just like standing right next to those pen stocks and again this is where they after they've gone under the highway and then they slope down to the powerhouse. 
you can tell I was impressed because I mostly took pictures of the pin stocks, but um, And I can give you the specifics. Uh, I have a little information here. The Cresta development includes the Cresta Dam, which is a 114 foot high concrete gravity dam with an overflow structure that has a crest length of 377.5 feet. It has a primary spillway containing two 124 foot wide bays each controlled by a hydraulically operated drum gate and a 22 and a half foot wide supplementary spillway located to the east of the drum gates controlled by a radial gate. And then there's the Cresta Reservoir, which is almost three miles long. It's a, uh, it was created in 1949 when they built the Cresta Dam and it has a reinforced concrete intake structure within the reservoir about 100 feet upstream of the dam near the eastern abutment. And then there's a 21,080 foot long tunnel that varies in diameter between 19 and 26 feet. Um, and it has an underground surge chamber. And then there's those two 12 foot diameter steel pin stocks that I showed you. 800 and feet for one of them and 775 feet long for the other. And then, as I said, it's the powerhouse, the Cresta powerhouse is reinforced concrete steel frame powerhouse. And it's about four miles downstream of the Cresta dam. And it has the two vertical Francis turbines with their maximum, um, each, uh, their maximum hydraulic capacity is 4,000 and something cubic feet per second. And they're each connected to a, a generator with a capacity of almost 40 megawatts. So, uh, and then I showed you the switch yard. And that's pretty much it for this Cresta development. I just want to show you this graphic again so you'll kind of see the pieces that I've pieced together so far. It's sort of complex <laughs> up there and uh, you, there are a lot of tunnels and uh, they've pieced together a lot of this over the years. So um, sometimes it's hard to find out exactly uh, what the details are, but coming from Lake Almanor, and then those caribou power plants are up here that uh, discharge into the uh, four bay for Belden. And then the water comes through Belden, goes through the Rock Creek Reservoir, and on down to Cresta. And eventually I'll cover this Poe area. But uh, for today, this Cresta powerhouse... Uh, just know that it's uh, the reach of this Cresta development is 4.7 miles. And then the water eventually ends up down here in Lake Oroville, the Oroville Reservoir. So let me see what else I have here. Yeah, I'll just leave you with this photo of the Cresta powerhouse. I wish I had another photo from the other side, but can't get down there. And... Um, let me make this a little bit larger. And as I said, this was in November. It's about 50 degrees up there. Just really nice country up there. So if you ever get a chance to go up Highway 70 along the North Fork of the Feather River through Feather River Canyon, um, it's a great trip. And you can see these uh, pieces of the stairway of power all the way as, as you go. You'll go through tunnels and um, uh, just wind along with the river. So I will leave you with this. And I really want to thank you for all of your views and subscriptions. 
I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. And thank you for all of your holiday wishes that you sent to me. And um, I'll see you later.